Hi, this is Bart Polson, and this video is for lifespan development, and in it, we're looking at the first online quiz for Chapter 5, which is on middle childhood. The first question on this quiz is, which of the following sports would promote the greatest amount of aerobic exercise? The choices are baseball, football, soccer, and volleyball. Now, um, I think that common sense might be enough to answer this one. But the, uh, of these four choices, soccer is most likely to promote uh, the highest amount of aerobic exercise. You know, and I've got this little chart I found here. Um, you see that soccer is there in the top category, the example activities, and that, uh, you know, games and jogging and so on are down below, and soccer, uh, other ones wouldn't uh, show on here at all. You know, soccer's there right up the top. One reason soccer's very popular. Um, okay. Second question, Stephen has a problem on his test that says line one is longer than line two, and line two is longer, longer than line three. Is line three longer than line one? And which concept is this question testing? And the choices are decentration, transitivity, seriation, or conservation. The answer to this one is B, transitivity. And... Um, you know, we got a little chart here that shows that if X is greater than Y and Y is greater than K, then X is also greater than K. It's just, you know, um, good mathematical concept. The third question is, on her way to school, Vicky saw an older woman fall and lose all of her groceries. She knew that if she stopped to help pick them up, she'd be late for school and would not be allowed to play at recess. But she also knew that the woman needed some help. She decided to help the woman. Which stage of moral development is she operating under? Well, the uh, choices are A, objective, B, pre-conventional, C, conventional, or D, post-conventional. The answer here, uh, the book tells us, is post-conventional. Well, um, you know, truthfully, I would say it's very hard to know from this particular one because it tells us that she's going through this process um, and the actual decision doesn't, well, in any case, it's hard to know. It's hard to know from this particular information, but it is labeling it as post-conventional. And here's the chart from the book of post-conventional is the last two. This at the bottom is level three, where we have what's called stage five, which is contractual legalistic orientation and stage six, universal ethical principles. Um, and that, anyhow, that's what the book is saying for that particular question. Okay. Question number four, which of the following thirst stone abilities would be in effect when the child works on a timed word puzzle? Well, it helps to know that uh, thirst stone was an early intelligence test developer. And we're looking at, it could be memory, it could be inductive reasoning or word fluency, or it could be verbal meaning. The answer in this one is word fluency. So you're taking a word puzzle, it's timed, see what you can do on it. And i uh, got this lovely little Illustration of the things that go into Thurstone's test, uh, as though it were a diary. We have associative memory on the top left, word fluency to the top right, that's the one we just talked about, reasoning, verbal comprehension, spatial visualization, perceptual speed, and number. So, uh, several factors. We were looking at word fluency in this one. The fifth question Which of the following would be a ratio obtained by a score on an intelligence test? So, we're looking for a ratio. And we have MA, IQ, CA and MSQ, all very mysterious things. Well, the one we're looking for is IQ, and uh, what that has to do with an intelligent, intelligence quotient or ratio. And right here, I've got the formula. You just take a person's mental age, how old they actually are, excuse me, how well they perform on a test. I mean, are they, say for instance, you have a 14 year old, but they're performing at a level that is conventional for 17 year olds then they would have a mental age of 17. You divide that by their chronolo chronological age, 14. Uh, that'll give you a number between zero and one, multiply that times 100, and you get an IQ score. I also have a table here that shows uh, what percentage of the general population falls into various categories. So, you know, 50% uh, of the people are average, 23% uh, below average, 25% above, and yeah, pretty simple uh, things there. Okay, the sixth question, what were the findings of the research by Patterson 2006? Now, hopefully you had your book with you so you could look up who on earth was Patterson and what did they do in 2006? Well, they talked about same-sex couples rearing children, same-sex parents. And the choices are A, psychological adjustment raised by same, of children raised by same-sex parents 
was comparable to children raised by heterosexual parents, uh, the psychological adjustment was not as healthy, or that they were healthier, or uh, that they were very different. Um, that the psychological adjustment of children raised by same-sex parents was very different from children raised by heterosexual parents. Well, interestingly, uh, the answer in that particular study and in many other studies is it, it, it doesn't seem to make a big difference in terms of adjustment that is comparable. And it goes without saying that within heterosexual couples, there's a huge amount of variation in terms of levels of adjustment. And we're just talking about means and the same thing's going to be true with same-sex couples. But overall, it doesn't seem to make a difference. Um, in fact, here are actually uh, two men who are both... Uh, contemporary Christian music singers with their two adopted children, although I think the one on the right looks like the guy. Um, and it's worth pointing out that in a very large number of uh, gay and lesbian couples who are parents, they actually are the biological parents. One of them is of, of the children. And anyhow, so that's what we got there. Uh, question number seven. What is the critical time for problems for children of divorce? So if your parents get divorced, what's the most important time to pay attention to things? The first few days after the breakup, the first year after the breakup, the first five years after the breakup, or until the child has children, however long that may be. Well, the research is indicating that the first year is particularly important. So not just the first few days, but the entire first year. Um, here's my child being torn apart by divorce. Make of that what you will. Okay, question number eight. What do children look for in a friend when they are eight to 11 years old? Do they look for proximity or shared activities or shared interests or parent approval? Well, our book tells us that C, shared interests, is the major goal. Now, I have a chart of uh, friends, and it doesn't really fit in with this one, uh, eight to nine. But um, the idea here is that they want to do things that they both have in common. Shared interests can be a very quick and easy way of establishing a relationship. Question number nine, Aaron, a seven-year-old, won't talk to anyone except a select few close friends. What's, what is the most likely developmental reason? And our choices are Aaron is scared of her parents. She has stage fright. She's too focused on schoolwork or she has a social phobia. Well, although you have precious little information to go on, the one that's getting marked correct is that Aaron has a social phobia. Uh, anxieties and social disorders are not that uncommon among children. You know, we like to think of uh, childhood as this wonderful, magical time where everything's groovy, but it can also be a terribly um, stressful and difficult time for a lot of kids who, uh, despite every effort and every apparent qualification, can have a very hard time getting along with others. Last question in this first quiz. Which of Selma's stages is occurring when a child will play a game that a friend chooses so she can choose the next game? So it's a very deliberate kind of turn-taking, a strategical turn-taking. Uh, the question is whether it's one-way assistance, fair-weather cooperation, intimate and mutual sharing, or autonomous interdependence, to use our big words. And uh, the answer here is fair-weather cooperation. Basically, I'll cooperate with you as long as I get what I want the next time around. And to go back to the same uh, table we had a moment ago, but this time it works in, you see that we have stage two there. From 7 to 12, friends are viewed as doing things for one another, but the focus still remains on self-interest. Anyhow, that is the end of Quiz 1 on Chapter 5, Middle Childhood for the course Lifespan Development. Thanks for watching.